Good evening to everybody. Thank you for taking the time to tune in. God just keeps getting deeper. Tonight is, is really good. It's, uh, it's actually teaching us. It's, it's, it's God teaching us about him. And the one thing I've come to understand is that we have to be willing to change. So, and change our thinking. Let me just say it that way. We have to be willing to change our thinking and understand that with God, nothing that we do will ever be anything like we think. That's godliness. Amen. But tonight is really good. I'm excited. Um, get your pen and your paper. We're going to go to uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. And allow God to give us an understanding about his way of doing things. Because truly, God's ways are not our ways. And let me share this with you. Tonight, God's going to make good understanding or give you good understanding about living by faith. That's the thing I want to make sure you hear tonight. He's going to give you good understanding about living by faith, changing your thinking about it. Amen. So we're in Isaiah chapter 50 and we're going to uh, read a few verses. Let's pray first. God, we thank you for all that you are presently doing. We give you glory and honor, God, for these are your people. You know, their hearts, their minds, their desires, their concerns, their fears, and every one of their needs. God, right now, do what only you can do. Speak to them according to your knowledge of the content of their heart. Allow them to be changed by your word. We give you glory and honor. Let it rain right now. We bless you in the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Isaiah chapter 50, I'm going to read verses 4 through 9. Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 9. Listen to what it says. It says, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God hath opened mine ear. I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifies me, who will contend with me, who is my adversary. Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Though they shall all wax old as a garment, the moth shall eat them up. Somebody say amen. So what I want to talk to you about tonight, the light of righteousness, the light of righteousness. In verses four through nine, this is the righteousness of the Lord. Let's just, let's get into it and let's understand. This is righteousness. Write that on your page, righteousness. This is the righteousness of the Lord. Listen to verse 4. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned. Understand. The Lord, this is the righteousness of the Lord towards his servant, the prophet. Always remember this. The Lord rewards us publicly, purposefully, that he may be glorified in the reward. So I'm going to give you understanding about that in a moment, but let me share this with you. Because the Lord, this is his righteousness toward his servant, the prophet, for this purpose, to cause people to clearly see his delight in his servant and to justify his service and allow him to glory in the authority of heaven. Understand, righteousness is God clearly revealing, causing people to clearly see his delight in you and justify your service and cause you to glory in the authority of heaven. And the Lord needs it understood. This is a need now, a need with purpose. Let me teach you this. Let me share this with you. Every need that the Lord fulfills is purposeful according to his will being made manifest in the earth through you. So listen, he has a need. This is a need. He needs you to have an understanding of what he has given for righteousness sake. And the Lord, listen, he has given me 
the not, he has given me the tongue of the learned, or he has given me authority to speak in his name according to what he shows me. Understand now, he's teaching you about what he has given purposely for the purpose of you seeking him out. But understand, he has given me the authority to speak in his name according to what he has shown me. And understand, when God rewards your service, what he gives you allows you to glory in his authority, meaning he has given you something that only the Lord can give you. Understand, and he only gives it to you. Please understand, because what he gives you allows you to glory in his authority according to this truth, that he's the only one that can give you what has been given to you, and also that men may honor you, for there is none else like you. Understand, when the Lord rewards your faithfulness, the purpose is to reveal his delight in you and to cause you to walk in the honor of holiness. Let me say this again. Holiness is not a lifestyle. Holiness is not the clothes you wear. Holiness is the honor bestowed upon you by heaven when it rewards your faithful servant because it gives you something that no one else has that God may glory in what he has given you. Are you understanding? Let me teach it to you. Let me show it to you. First place we're going to go is to, uh, Reve uh, not Revelation, but excuse me, Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. Let me show it to you. Genesis 41. I want you to listen. Listen to, to Pharaoh. He's talking about Joseph because what God has given Joseph is the authority to interpret dreams. But there's none else that has this authority. Therefore, it clearly reveals the Lord's delight in Joseph according to what he has given him, and it establishes him as holy according to none else having this authority and causes men to honor him according to the authority that heaven has given him. Listen, listen to what Pharaoh says. Verse 39, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, listen, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. So what God had given Joseph according to his delight in him was an authority that none else could give him and that none else had. He gave him something that none else could give him so that he would glory in the authority of heaven. And he gave him an authority that none else had that he would be holy and men would honor him according to the holiness of what heaven had given him for there was none else like him. Remember the scripture clearly declares that be ye holy for I am holy. But the only way that you are made holy is when the Lord honors your faithfulness and rewards it and gives you the authority of heaven. Let me give you another witness. First, uh, First Kings chapter three. 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 Let's go there. Listen now. Listen. I want you to listen as God is is rewarding. No, first place I want to go. Listen to this. Listen. Listen. Watch now. Watch. First Kings three three. Listen. Solomon. Love the Lord, walking in the statutes of David, his father, only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Circle the word loved, because it is the Lord that knew that he loved him. Understand, it is the Lord that knew that he loved him. And according to his knowledge of loving him, the Lord was prepared to reward, to reveal his delight in him through righteousness. So watch what he gave him. Listen to this. Verse number 13, 
I have also given thee, uh, uh, verse 12, Behold, I've done according to thy words. I've given you a wise and understanding heart. So what I have given you, listen, is the authority of heaven in terms of wisdom to know things in the earth that are hidden from others. Understand that. And then understand, here's the holiness aspect of it. There was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So understand, when the Lord rewarded his service, he gave him an authority that only he could give him to cause him to glory in the authority of heaven. Also, he gave him authority that he would give to none else, that he would cause him the honor of holiness to rest upon him, that there would be none else in the earth that had the authority that he had. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? So we're going to go back to Isaiah 50. Listen now. So the Lord needs to understood, listen, that he has given me the authority to speak in his name according to the things that he shows me. The purpose is to clearly reveal his delight in me. Secondly, the purpose is that he may justify me as his servant and cause me to glory in his authority according to what he has given me. And let me make sure you understand this. Authority tendeth to presence. Hear me. Authority tendeth to presence. Whenever the Lord gives you the authority of heaven, the purpose is for heaven to establish its presence in the earth. Authority attendeth to presence. So please understand, the Lord only gives the authority of heaven to establish his presence in the earth. Remember, Emmanuel. Well, what did Emmanuel mean? God with us. But how did we know that God was with us? According to the authority that he had given Jesus to execute the judgment of heaven through delivering those that were oppressed of the devil. Authority tended to presence. So the purpose for the Lord having me declare what he has given me is because heaven is set to establish its presence in the earth through its authority that it has given to its servant, the prophet. This is why heaven is having the servant declare what heaven has given him. It's no different than Isaiah 61. Listen, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Wait a minute. What is the purpose for you declaring what heaven has given you? Because in declaring that heaven has given you its authority, heaven is declaring and establishing its presence on earth for the purpose of being sought out. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Let's keep going. Listen now. Listen. He has given me the tongue of the Lord. Here it is. That I should know how to speak a word in season. That I should know how to speak a word in season. Listen to this. This is good. Listen. Why give understanding? First, let me not even go there yet. Let me, let me do this. Understand this. Once again, this is righteousness. This is righteousness. This is God. Clearly, through what he has given his servant, the prophet, revealing his delight in him. Understand. Clearly, when heaven gives to you, the purpose is to cause people to clearly see its delight in you. Justify your service and cause you to glory. What does glory mean? Glory is that there is none else like you. What is the glory of God? That there is none else that has authority like him. That's the glory of God. What is the glory of the servant of God? That the Lord gives that servant things that are impossible for anyone else to give and that he gives that servant something that he gives no one else for the purpose of causing that servant to walk in the honor of holiness. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Listen clearly. He has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season. Understand 
The Lord desires that you have understanding of the authority for the purpose of seeking him out according to your understanding. And understand, once again, this is too clearly. Let me share this with you. Let me say this to you. When you saw Jesus healing the sick, it was God clearly revealing to everyone around him his delight in him. When you saw Joseph interpreting dreams, it was God clearly revealing to everyone around him his delight in him and that the authority of heaven was in their midst. Are you listening? When Abraham prayed for Abimelech and saved his house from death and God opened the wombs of the women in his house and they were able to bear children, it was God revealing clearly his delight in Abraham, justifying him as his servant and also causing him to glory in the authority of heaven. So listen that I should know how to speak a word in season and understand. Here's the purpose, purpose. Somebody say purpose, purpose for giving me the authority to speak in his name according to the things that he shows me. This is the purpose that I would get, the, that he would give me the knowledge to know how to speak a word according to the present season. Listen now, the understanding is for the purpose of seeking. The purpose for giving me the authority to speak in his name according to what he shows me is that I would be given the knowledge of how to speak a word in season. Let me teach you something real good. Listen to me. Watch. God does declare things that are set to be fulfilled in their season. Understand, he's teaching you about how he declares his word. He does declare things that will be fulfilled in their season. Let me show you. Let me first take you to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter two. Luke chapter 1, excuse me. Luke chapter 1. Verse number 20. Listen to the angel. Okay, and let's clarify clearly. What is an angel? An angel is merely nothing more than a messenger from heaven that reveals the secret things of heaven. Period. It's just like a prophet. Go to uh, Revelation 22 because the prophet tells the the prophet, the, the angel tells the prophet, I am of thy brethren, the prophets. Exact same thing. The only difference, he abides in heaven. And when he shows up, he's revealing the secret things of heaven. So listen to the understanding that he gives to Zechariah concerning the God declaring things. Listen to what he says. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be fulfilled shall be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. This is an out of season word. A word out of season is a word that the Lord gives you that is set to be fulfilled at a later date. Let me give you another witness. Let me give you another witness. Daniel chapter 10, Daniel chapter 10, Daniel chapter 10, Daniel chapter 10, Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Come on now, it's going to get real good. It's already good to me. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Watch. Verse number one. Now listen. Listen. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar. And the thing was true. And the time appointed was long. Are you understanding? The time appointed was long. So God showed him what he would do, but it was an out-of-season word. It was not an in-season word. It wasn't a present time or a present season word. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? Now I'm going to show you what a present season or in-season word looks like. Watch this. Here's an in-season word. This is an in-season word. 1 Samuel chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10. 
This is an in-season word. Listen to it. Verse 2 through 8. Listen. When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre and the border of Benjamin and Zelzah. And they will say unto thee, listen, present season, they shall say unto thee, the asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy fathers have left the care of the asses in sorrow for you, saying, what shall I do for my son? Then thou shalt go on forward from thence. Thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive with their hands. Present season word. Listen to it. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass when thou come thither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery, a tabret, a pipe, and a harp and before them, and they shall prophesy. This is a present season word. What is the purpose of a present season word? It is to strengthen your confidence in the authority of the Lord and that and to assure you that you are in the presence of the Lord. That is the purpose of a in-season or a present season word. Let me give you one more witness. Let me give you one more witness. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. In-season word. Are you listening? In-season word. Present season word. This is what this is. John chapter 4. Listen, John chapter 4. Verse number 15 through 19. Listen to it. The, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus says unto her, Go call your husband and come hither. The woman in essence said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly, Listen to the woman. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. So understand, she received an in-season word, a present-season word. What was the purpose? It is to strengthen her confidence in the authority of the Lord in the earth. To be able to say, go call your husband. And she said, I don't have one. He said, you had five of them. Okay, it strengthened her confidence in the authority of the Lord in the earth, and it assured her, are you listening? It assured her that she was in the presence of the Lord. The authority that the Lord has given me to, to speak things that he has shown me is to give me the knowledge, the knowledge of how to speak a word in season or according to the present season, for what purpose? It is to cause people's confidence in the authority of the Lord to be strengthened and to assure them, to assure them that they are in the presence of the Lord. You ask yourself, Lord, why would you give us so much understanding of what you are giving your servant? Because the Lord desires to be sought out according to the authority that he has given his servant and be glorified in his servant according to that authority. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Watch this. To him that is weary. Are you listening? To him that is weary. Now understand, these are the Lord's words. These are the things that pleases the Lord to happen. Are you listening? These are the Lord's pet words. These are the things that it pleases the Lord to happen. So he needs you to understand who it is that he desires to seek him out. Let me share this with you clearly. Understand this. When the Lord gives you authority, his sole purpose is that he be sought out through you. Are you understanding? Let me, let me watch this. Watch, watch, watch. I'm going to show you God, how good God is. Watch this. Watch this. First Kings. First Kings. First Kings chapter four. First Kings chapter four. 
Watch. 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 Hallelujah, somebody. You listening? I'm going to say this again. See, these are the things that aren't taught, but it's true. When God gives you authority, his sole purpose is that men would seek him out through you according to the authority that he has given you. You know how you be running around and people be talking about power and authority? Well, let me ask you a question. How can you possess something that you lack understanding about? Somebody say amen. Type in there, amen. How can you possess something that you lack authority about? The purpose for giving you authority is that the Lord may be sought out through you according to that authority that he has given you, that he may be glorified in the authority that he has given you and revealed to all that there is none else with the authority that they are partaking of. Let me show it. I'm going to say it again. Listen, the only purpose for giving you authority, giving you the authority of heaven is that men may seek God out through you according to the authority that he has given you. When the Lord gives authority to a servant, he's literally saying, I want to be sought out. Remember, all these words in chapter 50 are according to his good pleasure. But let me give you the witnesses you need about the authority and that God only gives authority to be sought out. Watch this, 1 Kings chapter 4. Listen now, watch, hallelujah, I'm, I'm up feeling all right. Listen now, verse 29, and God gave Solomon wisdom. Wait a minute, big word, God gave Solomon wisdom. What he gave him was the authority of heaven to understand things in the earth that were hidden from other men. God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much and largest of heart, even as the sand on the seashore. Now go down to verse 34. Look at the purpose. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom, his wisdom, his wisdom. There was none else that had his wisdom. God gave him the wisdom or the authority for the purpose of men seeking him out according to the authority that he had given Solomon. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Let me give you one more witness. Let me give you one more witness. Watch this. Let me give you one more witness. Where I want to go. I want to go. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter uh, 4. I'm, I, I hope God making it plain for you. Listen, making it plain. Listen now. Listen, listen, listen. Verse 23, Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Listen. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Healing. The authority belonged to the Lord. The Lord gave him the authority to deliver all that were oppressed of the devil. Watch now. Listen to God. Listen to God. Verse 25. And there followed him great multitudes of people from. Wait a minute. And there followed him great multitudes of people from. So the authority was to cause people to seek out the Lord according to the authority that he has given his servant. The purpose of authority is to cause men to seek out the Lord according to the authority that he has given his servant. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? When the Lord endows you or gives you authority, the purpose is for men to seek him out through the servant according to the authority that he has given the servant. Let's go back. He says, to him that is weary. So understand, the Lord has given me the authority to speak in his name according to the things that he shows me, giving me the knowledge of how to speak a word in season, an in season or a present season word. And these are the people that he desires to seek him out for that word. Those that are weary. Who are the weary? The weary are those that are, have been searching for an ordained assembly of God or, listen now, or 
a place where truly the spirit of the Lord abides. Here it is. To those who are weary in their searching. Listen. Now, here's the great part about it. God knows the hearts of all men. So therefore, I'm only declaring his knowledge of the hearts of the men that are women or those that are seeking. Here's who he desires to be sought out by. Those who are weary or full of sorrow. Hearing me full of sorrow. The only reason this word is going forth is because the fullness of times is upon us. And what was God waiting for? He was waiting for the hearts to be full of sorrow in their weariness through searching for a place where there was an ordained assembly of God or a place where the spirit of the Lord truly abides. Now listen, these are the people that he desires to be sought out by. And when they come, he's going to give them a present season word that will plant them in the place that he abides. What did I tell you the purpose of a present season word was? It was to strengthen your confidence in the authority of the Lord in the earth and assure you that you were in the presence of the Lord. He desires to be sought out by people who are weary in their searching for a place that is an assembly that is ordained of God or that are looking for a place where truly the spirit of the Lord abides. Are you hearing me? He's going to give you rest when you seek him out through giving you an in-season word that will plant you in the place where his spirit abides. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Come on, I got to keep going. Listen now. Somebody say understanding. Listen, he wakeneth mine ear to hear. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Understanding. Somebody say understanding. Listen now. Why is the Lord giving you understanding concerning the authority that he has given his servant purposefully because he desires you to seek him out according to the understanding he is giving you concerning the authority that he has given his servant. It's no different. Let's make sure we understand this. Watch, it's no different. I'm a, this is going to make you laugh, but it's going to make perfect sense. Watch. So they're sitting in the synagogue and all of a sudden, Jesus says, give me that book. And he declares, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to declare the captives, to, to set the captives free and to open the prison door of those that are bound. What do you think the purpose of that was? It was so that the people would have an understanding of the authority that heaven had given him and that they could seek him out according to their understanding of the authority that heaven had given him. That was the purpose of the Lord having him declare that heaven had given him an given him authority and an understanding of that authority. Am I making sense to you? Is it making sense? Now do you understand why he stood up and made the declaration? Well, the same thing here. The Lord desires you to have an understanding of the authority that he has given his servant, the prophet, for the purpose of causing you to seek him out according to that authority. Are you listening? Watch now. It's no different. It's no different than what you read that Jesus did. It's the same thing. It's just God declaring. Remember, these are his words. This is according to his good pleasure. And it is his good pleasure to be sought out. But let me share something with you. 
You can't seek him out if you have no understanding of knowledge of the authority that abides in your midst. So now does it make sense why Jesus stood up and made the announcement? Are you understanding? So listen, he says, he wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. So he wants you to understand the authority he's given his servant. He says, watch this, daily. Are you hearing me? Daily, he causes me to, he shows me the things that I need to know to give an in-season word to those who are weary in their search for an assembly ordained of God or a place where truly the spirit of the Lord abides. You want me to say it again? Daily. Are you listening? Daily, he shows me and gives me knowledge of how to speak a word in season to those that are weary in their search for an assembly ordained of God. Let me show you this. This is the fulfillment of a scripture that we already went through. Let me show you. Zephaniah chapter three. Watch now. Watch, watch. Watch, watch now, watch. Zephaniah chapter three, because understand, the announcement is, listen, the source of the gathering. Listen, verse number 18, Zephaniah three eighteen. We went through this. I will gather them that are full of sorrow for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. So now understand, he wants you to understand the authority. I hope you're listening because it's good. I hope you're listening. He, you can't say that you don't have good understanding. He says daily, morning by morning, daily, he shows me. He wakens my ear. or he sh When God shows you something, he literally just tells you. He shows me how I should speak to give a word in season to those that are weary in their search for an assembly ordained of God or for a place where the spirit of the Lord truly abides. What is the Lord saying? He's saying he desires to be sought out daily to give people this in season knowledge, to give them a word to plant them and to comfort their hearts from the weariness of searching for him. Let me help you understand. The Lord is telling you where he can be found. For those that are searching, he's telling you where he can be found. And if you search your heart to those that have been searching and been praying and been like, Lord, I just want to go to a place where I know that you are. I just want to be sure that your presence is in that place. Are you listening to God? He says daily, I desire to be sought out to give an in-season word to those that are weary from their search. Let me help you understand something. Many have been on that search for years. Some have been on that search for 5, 15, 20 years. Some for 6, 10 months, 8 months, whatever. They've all been on that search. And the Lord says, daily, I'm willing to give them the knowledge in season. I mean, I'm going to speak to them according to their present situation to give them a confidence in my authority and to assure them that they are in my presence. Are you hearing what I'm teaching you? To assure them that they are in my presence presence. Come on, let's keep going. Let's go. Verse five, the Lord God hath opened mine ear and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Once again, I understand this is the righteousness of the Lord towards his servant to clearly cause people to see his delight in his servant. Also that he would glory in that authority. Understand this, but this is that you may know 
the Lord's delight in obedience and be delivered from the bondage of the lies that you presently trust in and set your heart on righteousness. Once again, the purpose for the announcement is to give people an understanding of the authority that the Lord has given to his servant for the purpose of them seeking him out. I'm going to say it one more time. Just stop, wipe your forehead clean, and think about it. Go yourself and read. What was the purpose of standing up and giving the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me? Because the Lord needed the people to, re to understand that the authority of heaven was in their midst but also to understand the authority that had been given to the servant, that through that understanding, they knew how to seek God out. Are you hearing me? And here, the Lord needs it understood. He has opened mine ear. Now, understand, what is the, that ear is that he could show me. We say here, but truly it is to show me how to how or give me the knowledge of how to speak a in season word to him that is weary listen to me when you seek god out according to that authority he's going to give you a word to plant you are you hearing me but this the purpose for telling you that he has opened my ear is to teach you about the lord's delight in obedience. Understand, listen, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. So the Lord is giving you an understanding for his purpose for opening my ear or giving me the authority of heaven to show people or the knowledge of how to speak an in-season word to those that is that are weary. And the reason is because of my obedience, because I kept his commandments and I waited on his timing. In order for the Lord to give you authority, you must, listen now, you must keep his commandments and not turn back. Keeping a commandment doesn't mean doing it and then going back to what you were doing. No, it means keeping that commandment and standing steadfast in that commandment until you are told to do something else. Please understand, it doesn't just say I was not rebellious because rebellion deals with obedience. And let me show it to you. First Samuel chapter 15. First Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Watch. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Watch. Listen. Verse 22. Listen. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Here it is. As in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of ramp. Listen. For rebellion. And it is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. He also has rejected you. Listen to him. Rebellion. What would you be rebelling against? You will be rebelling against keeping the commandment of the Lord. Are you understanding? And watch to keep it means to obey and remain steadfast, not turn back. It says, neither turned away back. So understand, the purpose for giving me the authority was according to his delight in my obedience. Understand, the Lord is explaining to you or giving you an understanding of the purpose of him giving the authority to cause you to understand what is required of you to receive the authority of heaven. In order to receive the authority of heaven, one must keep the commandments of the Lord and remain steadfast and not turn back. Understand, the giving of authority to a servant reveals or causes people to clearly see the Lord's delight in that servant. 
Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? The purpose of telling you he's opened my ear is to get you to understand the Lord's delight. Understand the open ear bears witness to the Lord's delight in obedience and strengthens your confidence in God as a rewarder of those that keeps his commandments. Are you understanding? Let me give you another witness. Watch now. Watch, 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 watch. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Here it is. Watch now. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch. This is good. Verse 23. What come out of those words? They read. Who doing the who doing the talking? The prophet. Who? Jesus. Who's doing the talking? The prophet. Listen to the prophet as he reveals the secret of heaven. Listen. You probably read the scripture your whole life, but you're about to get the understanding. If a man love me, he will keep my words. My father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. No, we will come unto him and abide with him. How does heaven abide with you? It abides with you through giving you its authority. Are you understanding? Watch. You show the Lord you love him through keeping his commandments he shows everyone around you he loves you by giving you his authority. Are you understanding? You show the Lord you love him by keeping his commandments, meaning you're not rebellious. You don't turn back. You endure whatever to... I'm getting ahead of myself. Understand, you show the Lord you love him through keeping his commandments. He shows you and everyone around you, he loves you by giving you his authority. Are you understanding? That's how God reveals clearly to everyone around you and to you his delight in you. Because delight and love are the same thing. The Bible says only the Lord had a delight in thee to love thee. Okay, understand. So he reveals his love or his delight in you by giving you authority. You reveal your love to him by keeping his commandments. Are you understanding? Only he's telling, he's giving you understanding of what was required to have my ear open to give you an understanding of the greatness of his delight in obedience. How great is his delight in obedience? That he gives great things. And what is the great thing that he gives according to his delight in obedience? He gives the authority of heaven. Somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let me make sure you understand something. The riches, the wealth, and all that, they pale in comparison to the authority. Because the authority is God clearly revealing to all around you his delight in you. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on, let's keep going. Watch this. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off their hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Listen now. Somebody say understanding. This, this is for the Lord's righteousness sake in giving you an understanding of what was required of his servant to receive the authority of heaven. Remember, these words belong to the Lord. So therefore, understand, listen to the Lord. Listen to him. His heart is to give you, he's teaching. Understand, deliverance through understanding. He's teaching. He's giving you an understanding of what he required of his servant to give him the authority of heaven or to open his ear. He just didn't open his ear. There was something required of him. Therefore, in order to set a standard for service in terms of receiving the authority of heaven, the Lord is giving you an understanding of what he required of him in order for him to to give him the authority of heaven or to open his ear. And what he required of him was to, to keep his commandment. He had to suffer shame to keep the commandment of the Lord. He had to be willing to endure 
ridicule, persecution, and shame to keep the commandment of the Lord to show the Lord his love for him. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Are you getting what I'm teaching you? Listen now, I gave my back to the spiders. But watch now, you're not just giving your back to them. That only happens through keeping the commandment. So in order for God to give you the authority of heaven, you must be willing to endure the shame and the ridicule and the persecution and keeping the commandment of heaven. And understand, when I say endure, that means waiting in the shame and to keep the commandment of the Lord. Let me give you a couple of witnesses. Let me make it real plain for you. Watch this, watch this, watch. First place we're going to go. Foundational, foundational. What does that mean? That means if it's foundational, that makes it generational. If it's generational, that makes it eternal. If it's in the law, if you see it happening in the law, that makes it generational. So what does that mean? Because, you know, you got so many people, they, they just blow my mind with, with they thinking. Watch this. No, watch. If you can quote the scripture that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he has not changed. He says in Malachi chapter 3, he says, I am the Lord, I change not. That's why ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Okay, how can you have an everlasting covenant? Amen. A generational covenant. Amen. And then tell me that the things that apply to allow God to establish covenant with you, which is everlasting, somehow faded away. Makes no sense. Understand. Let me show you. He's teaching it in order for God to give you the authority of heaven. You must be willing to endure the shame, the ridicule and the persecution in keeping his commandment to be found pleasing in his sight for him to delight in you and give you the authority of heaven. Listen to this first place foundational Genesis chapter 12. Listen. Now, the Lord has said unto Abram, verse 1, Get thee out thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Wait a minute. Listen now. Listen, listen. To keep this commandment, he's going to have to give himself to people to ridicule him, to persecute him. I gave my back to the spiders. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Okay, where was the shame in the equation? The shame was in keeping the commandment. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? He had to endure the shame. He couldn't turn back once he started suffering it. He had to endure the shame in order to be found pleasing or delightful in the sight of the Lord in order for the Lord to trust him with the authority of heaven. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Next place I'm going to go. Psalm 69. Psalm 69. Psalm 69. Psalm 69. Watch that. I got a real good one in Isaiah 54. But I'm going to go to Psalm 59 and you're going to see it real good in Isaiah 54. But I'm going to show you Psalm 69. And I'm going to show you Isaiah 54. Watch. Psalm 69, verse number 7. Listen, listen, listen now. Hear me. Because for thy sake, verse 7, I have borne reproach or disgrace. Shame hath covered my face. Okay, listen now. The only way that's possible is to keep the commandment of of the Lord. Let me share something. You want to know why you suffer shame to keep the commandment of the Lord? It's because no one is going to agree with it because it's not going to make sense to the carnal mind. Are you hearing me? That's what's going to cause the shame, the ridicule, and the persecution. Let me make it real plain for you. You don't just go to the cross and you've done nothing. You only go to the cross if you are guilty of something. But Jesus went being innocent based on the commandment that had been given him, suffered the shame, the ridicule, and the persecution of those men in order that heaven would trust him with authority. 
heaven raised him from the grave according to his obedience in keeping the commandment in spite of the ridicule, the persecution, and the shame. The Lord only gave Abraham authority. Let me make you understand this. Genesis chapter 20, Abraham's wife is taken from him. It's an impossible situation, but the commandment of the Lord is your wife is going to have a son at this set time in the next year. So according to the commandment, what do you think everybody around him is thinking? There's no way you get your wife back. Pack it up and let's go. But in spite of all of the words around him to keep the commandment, to show himself worthy of the authority of heaven, he endured the shame, the ridicule, and the persecution, and waited on God, and the authority of heaven came and worked on his behalf, delivered his wife from Abimelech, and then gave him authority to pray for Abimelech and deliver his household from death. Am I making sense to you? Are you understanding? You don't need anybody <coughs> to agree with you when God tells you something, you should expect to suffer shame. You should expect to be ridiculed. You should expect to be persecuted because your steadfastness speaks to God and says, I love you and am determined to be faithful and wait until you are prepared to perform your word and bring me out of this situation. Are you listening? Last witness. One more. I got to go. I got to go. Come on, last witness. You're going to see it real good right here in Isaiah 54. Watch this. Isaiah 54, verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you go up, he then told him, enlarge the place of thy tent. Let them stretch forth the curtain of thine habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. To do that, they, will, they would have to suffer shame to keep the commandment. But God says, in this instance, no, keep the commandment, there will be no shame. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? They, they are so used to keeping the commandment and suffering shame, the Lord says, no, keep the commandment, this time won't be no shame. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? So in having you understand the price for the authority, it is to deliver you from the bondage of the lies that you trust in and cause you to set your heart on righteousness. Let me keep going because I'm going to make it real good. I'm going to make it plain. Somebody say understanding, understanding. Listen to verse seven. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I shall not be confounded. So watch this. Understanding. Listen now. Understanding. According to the Lord's delight in me. Hear me. Teaching. God is teaching. He's teaching real good. Listen, according to his, my understanding comes from my knowledge of his delight in obedience. You want me to say it again? What I'm about to say, my understanding comes from my knowledge of his delight in obedience for to be my God, he will exercise his authority and help me. Listen now, listen, he will give me the help of heaven to perform every word that has left my mouth. So hear me, there will be no confusion. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Listen now, understand my understanding is according. That's what verse number seven is. My understanding is according to his delight in obedience. Watch. Let me just go on. Let me show it to you. Watch now. Watch, 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 watch. Because I want you to hear me when I say this to you. Watch. God needed a witness for faithfulness that others may see, that they may know him as faithful and be delivered from the bondage of the lies that they presently trust in, have the courage to set their hearts on righteousness and walk uprightly in righteousness 
according to their knowledge through manifestation of God as faithful. Understand, listen, verse number seven is all about the Lord being known as faithful. You could never know him as faithful if you don't witness it. You hear talking about it, but the Lord is set to give you a witness of his faithfulness that you may set your hearts on the righteousness of heaven. My understanding is according to his obedience, his delight in obedience. So therefore, he's going to give me the help of heaven to prosper the works of my hands. And I'm sure there will be no confusion. Therefore, listen now, listen. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Understand, purposefully, this is to give you an understanding through witnessing it that God is faithful. Are you hearing me? The Lord desires to be known as faithful. But if you never see him be faithful to anyone, how can you know him as faithful? Because we have no faith in the church, because we have no faithful individuals, we don't know God is faithful. Because what is it for the Lord to be faithful to you? It is for the Lord to give you the authority of heaven or the help of heaven to prosper the works of your hands. That is the Lord being faithful. Let me, I got to go. I'm, 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 I'm going. Let me go. Hold up, hold up. Let me give you a couple of witnesses on faithfulness. Watch this. Somebody say foundation. Foundation. The Lord foundationally wants to be known as faithful. Let, let me share something with you. You're supposed to be moved to a place, hallelujah, where you fear being ashamed. Are you listening? Wait, wait. I know, I know that I shall not be ashamed. I know, I have knowledge that I shall not be ashamed. Wait a minute. Understand, you have to be in that position in order to know him as faithful. There's no other posture that you could possibly take to know him as faithful. Are you listening? Watch now. Watch, 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 watch. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Listen. Verse number 9. Verse number 9. This is Moses talking now. It's foundational. That makes it what? Generational. That makes it what? Eternal. Well, listen. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, know the Lord thy God, the faithful God. Know the Lord thy God, the faithful God. Wait a minute. To know him is to know him as faithful. Hallelujah. Are you understanding? Faithful, meaning he keeps his word that he's shown you according to the things he purposes to do in your life according to his covenant for your life. So understand, listen now, I know that I shall not be ashamed. Understand, he's going to help me. There will be no confusion. And according to my knowledge of his delight in obedience, I'm confident I won't be ashamed. Listen now, I'm done with these last two verses. Come on, come on. Verse 8. He is near that justifies me, who will contend with me. Let us stand together, who is my adversary, that have come near to me. Once again, verse number eight, take your pen and circle the word he. Circle the word he. Okay, what, what, why? Because these are his words. Hear me. These are his words according to his good pleasure. Are you understanding? These are the things that it pleases him to do. Understand. And listen now. He wants it understood that his authority is with me to justify me. Watch. 
but to also establish where he can be found. Here, he is near that justifieth me. Understand, he desires that it be known that his authority is with me to justify me, but also, listen, to establish where he can be found. And the purpose of his authority is to cause people to choose whether they're going to stand with the Lord or be his adversary. The authority is to cause you to receive his servant and to stand with him. The authority forces you to make a decision. Are you going to contend against that authority, be an adversary to that authority, or are you going to stand with that authority? He's teaching you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? He's teaching you. When the Lord manifests his authority in the earth through a servant, his expectation is for you to make a decision. Don't you remember what Elijah said? Choose you this day who you will serve. Why was he saying that? Because the authority of heaven was in their midst. And he made a declaration, he, a decree. He said to the people, choose this day who you're going to serve. Are you going to stand with God or are you going to be his adversary? Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? I am teaching you real good. Are you hearing me? When the Lord, listen to the scripture, he is near that justifies me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near. Now listen now, watch now, because it's good. Listen, the Lord is only making you understand that the authority is in your midst for this purpose, to justify and to cause you to choose. Is you going to stand with him or is you, are you going to be his adversary? And if you're going to be his adversary, he wants you to come near. Hallelujah. Don't you remember? Watch now. Watch. Watch. Do you not remember this? Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8. Some of you may even laugh. They have been following. They know this. Watch this. Watch. Zechariah 8 verse 17. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oaths. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. Because the Lord will not allow these things in this place. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Only those with a heart for God are going to be allowed to draw near. If you think that you're going to be an adversary of the Lord and come near, think again. Because no one that draws nigh seeking a word for their weariness will come forward with ill intentions. The Lord will search the hearts of everyone to make sure that all of the hearts that are in his presence are diligently seeking him. Let me make sure you understand this. The Lord, according to his authority, is calling to those that are weary, that are weary in their searching for an assembly ordained of God or searching for a place where the spirit of the Lord truly abides. These are those that he is seeking for and his authority is in your midst to cause you to choose to either stand with him or be his adversary. I'm done right here. Watch. Behold. The Lord God will help me. Listen now. Listen. Somebody say righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. Somebody type righteousness. Watch. The Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they shall all wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. I'm going to teach you this. This is good. Watch. Circle the word behold. Because behold, remember these are the Lord's words. And behold, this is something that the Lord desires to show you. Whenever the Lord says, behold, it's something he desires to show you. So listen now, listen. He wants to show you 
this righteousness that is in the life of his servant to teach you the truth about righteousness. Listen, and to deliver your hearts from the bondage of the lies that they presently trust in and through witnessing the manifestation of righteousness cause you to set your hearts on the righteousness of heaven. Listen, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Listen now. All they shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them. The moth shall eat them up. Listen, watch now. This is the righteousness of heaven. This, watch. This is the delight of the Lord and his servant. When the Lord says he will help me, that is giving me the authority to increase. Now listen now. The Lord will not allow any enemies to hinder my increase. Listen, when the Lord delights in you as his servant, he reveals clearly to those his delight in you through fighting the enemies of your increase. Understand, when the Lord gives you the help of heaven, it is purposeful to establish you as his servant and him as your God. From that moment forward, any enemy of your increase, the Lord will fight against them to hinder them from interrupting your increase according to his delight in you. Let me show it to you and make you understand it. Watch. You know it. You didn't heard it your whole life. You just didn't understand what it was. Watch now. Isaiah 54, 17. You like this part. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. That's the part you like. This is the part I love. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So now understand the righteousness of the Lord towards a servant in whom he delights. Listen now, is he will not allow any enemy to come against his increase or against his help because the help of heaven is the authority of heaven to prosper all of the works of of your hand. So he says, who is he that shall condemn me? Hear me. He ain't got to attack me with his hands. He don't got to pick no gun up at me. All he has to do is to condemn the works that God is prospering in his name. He now becomes an enemy of the Lord and the Lord will now fight that enemy for me, according to his delight in me, to fulfill righteousness. It's just like Jesus said to John the Baptist. He says, suffer it to be so now that we may fulfill all righteousness. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Are you hearing me? The Lord says, you need to see this. I'm going to help him. And all that shall condemn him shall wax old as a garment. Any enemy of his prosperity, because his prosperity is my prosperity. And purpose, my prosperity is that I may be glorified. So they would be enemies of my glory. Therefore, according to my word and according to my righteousness, I must defend my servant to reveal my delight in him. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? To defend you against the enemies of your prosperity is merely nothing more than God saying, I delight in him. Oh, I delight in them. Are you understanding how God sees it? Understand every, let me give you one last witness. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Go, go to 2 Chronicles 32. I'm done right here. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Watch this. Watch this. 2 Chronicles 32. Verse number 8. Watch. With him is an arm of flesh. But with us 
is the Lord, circle, our God, to help us and to fight our battles. There it is. There it is. There it is. The Lord God is the Lord thy God. It's just the thy is out. But understand, delight. The minute that God begins to prosper you, it reveals his delight in you. So therefore, his purpose is to be glorified in you. Those that would condemn would be coming against his glory. But according to his delight in you, he fights the enemies of your prosperity once again to reveal his delight in you. Are you understanding? Because the revelation of his delight in you is to cause you to walk in honor. That men may honor you according to them seeing your relationship with God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Go back over it. Listen to it. Go through it. It's good. I thank God for the word, but I'm going to say this again. I'm talking to the weary. Listen, there's an in-season word. Pass it around. There's an in-season word that the Lord is set to give to those that would seek him for it, to plant them in a place where he abides. Somebody say amen. God, we thank you so much for your word. We glorify you. We thank you, God, for your understanding. We thank you for deliverance, God, for truly there is none else like you. So now, God, allow all that hear, allow them to allow it to saturate their hearts, God. Encourage them. Give them the courage, God, to seek you out. We bless you. We praise you for all that you said here tonight. We extol you as the true and living God. We bless you right now in the resurrected name of your Christ. We pray and everybody said, amen. God bless you all. Have a good night.